I have burped more in like one night of pregnancy than the rest of my life combined. Hey everyone, I'm Leanne, and today it is finally time for me to do my first trimester recap. I have been waiting for this day for what feels like forever, but I mean, in reality, it's just been the first trimester, like a normal length, but it feels like a lifetime since I found out I was pregnant. And I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so excited to have made it through that first portion that is, the scariest portion? Well, that's what I've heard from a lot of people and obviously I haven't been through all the rest of it. So far, it was the scariest part. Definitely the most anxiety ridden and you know, just worried, is it gonna stick? Is this gonna work out? You know, is there heartbreak in the future? You know, it's just a very worrying time and everything is new, of course. I've never had a baby before, this is my first baby. And I'm just so excited and so grateful. I went through IVF. If you don't know me and you haven't been watching my channel, I've shared that entire journey on my channel, tons of videos. I've answered lots of questions about IVF. I am an open book. I love to share. And today I'm gonna to be sharing all about my first trimester, everything that I felt, the symptoms, feelings, things that surprised me. I also have a few product recommendations, things that really came in handy for me. And also I'll show you my bump, where we're at today. I feel like it's always changing. So you'll get to see where we are at today. Oh, and also I asked on my Instagram if you guys had any specific questions that you wanted me to answer in this video, and you definitely did. And I gathered together all of the most asked questions and I'm gonna answer those after I talk about all the symptoms and products and stuff like that. So all along the way, since I got my positive pregnancy test, I've been keeping a note in my phone called pregnancy feelings, trying to keep track of symptoms and take notes on my experience. But I do wanna to touch on the period right before I took my pregnancy test quickly, even though I didn't take notes on it because like I said, I did IVF. I've been through many two week waits and I try not to be hyper, hyper aware of every little thing and read into it and get my hopes up and all of that. Like there's a lot of emotions there. I vlogged through all of that. So you remember if you watch those vlogs, but the main two things that I noticed and actually let myself be aware of were that I was definitely feeling a little bit more tired at night. It was really just at night. And my whole life before pregnancy, definitely, I just generally like to stay up late. I don't fall asleep like watching movies at night or anything. Like I have no trouble going to sleep but I like to stay up late. And I just noticed myself being more and more tired in the evenings earlier than I normally would. And then also my boobs were sore, not crazy sore, but they felt weird. They had kind of a specific pain that was not in any one place. And it was kind of a different feeling that I ever felt before. I was noticing those things, but also not trying to read into it because those could have also been side effects from the medications that I was still on from IVF, estrogen and progesterone, which can cause like pregnancy like symptoms. So after I got my pregnancy test week five, we can actually consult the note now week five, I was noticing things. So the first thing that I wrote down is definitely one of the most surprising things that I am definitely convinced is pregnancy related. And a lot of you guys ask like, what was the most surprising thing? I have a few, but this was the first one that popped up. My ear holes, my second hole on just like my ear lobe got super irritated. They didn't wanna take an earring. Every single day I was trying to like force it through and it just got so gross and I wasn't wearing a different kind of metal. I do have to be kind of careful with what kind of metal I use in my piercings because I have had irritation in the past, but not in a long time. I wasn't wearing anything new. Like there was no reason this should be happening at all. And I thought it was so crazy. I talked about it on my story and I was like, tell me if I'm crazy, is this pregnancy related? And like hundreds of people wrote me back and were like, no, I had this exact same thing happen to me. And it was crazy to me. It's insane to me that that's like a pregnancy thing. But since then, basically I like fought it for a while. And then I realized like, whatever, I don't even care. It's just like my second ear hole. And I just stopped trying to put anything in them. I have tested it here and there, but just day to day, I'm like, whatever. If they want to close up, they can close up. This is a strange phenomenon. I'm not gonna fight it, you know? Also in week five, very normal. I was feeling pretty snacky, not like ravenous, but it was around Christmas time and I was definitely 
really enjoying those cookies and desserts. And I was feeling a little extra tired on and off through the day, but not anything crazy. I wasn't taking naps. It wasn't like a notable thing, really. I had no idea what was in store for me. And my boobs were still hurting, maybe a little more than they were before the pregnancy test. And just generally for week five, I was feeling pretty normal. Like when my mom was asking me how I was feeling, I'd be like, I'm normal, it's fine, like a little bit tired, a little bit snacky, I don't know. But the thing that had me really, really worried in week five, which like generally I was worried pretty much throughout the first trimester, but this week specifically, I was having some spotting. It was brown spotting, so it was old blood, and it wasn't a lot, but it lasted for days. And I have heard that spotting is normal during pregnancy, but it was definitely something that I wanted to bring up with my doctor. It was something that they said to be on the lookout for. So I went in for an ultrasound. I think actually my first ultrasound ended up being scheduled for the first day of the sixth week because of this spotting. And they detected a small subchorionic hematoma, which from my understanding, it's something that just developed not because of something, like I, I, I didn't do anything to cause this. There wasn't something wrong with the baby or the embryo that caused it. It's just something that pops up. And it's also something that can resolve itself. I don't know how common this is, but within my own life, I know two different people that have had a subchorionic hematoma. And I've heard from tons of you guys when I was going through it, that you've also dealt with it. And more than anything, it's just something that gives you a ton of anxiety because something about bleeding when you're pregnant, you're like alarm bells go off and it's just scary. And something that was said to me at one point, which is kind of half comforting, half not comforting, it is common, but it's not normal. Isn't that just like the most backwards thing that you totally would hear from a doctor? That was definitely very stressful. That moves into the sixth week. I did get my first ultrasound very early on the first day of the sixth week because of that bleeding. And I got to hear the heartbeat, which I know it's like so early. Some people don't get to hear the heartbeat that early. I was so happy. It was so comforting. It was the biggest relief of my life and obviously took a lot of stress out of the situation. I did end up having more bleeding in my sixth week and it was bright red blood. It wasn't a ton, but I had more bleeding. I ended up going back, getting another ultrasound. I had a lot of ultrasounds during this time. Nothing compared to during fertility treatments, but I had a lot because there were obviously concerning things happening and they just detected that subchorionic hematoma again. It had gotten a little bit larger, but again, they're like, don't worry, this is gonna be fine. This is normal, even though it's not really something that you hear about a lot. So I definitely wanna share that with you guys. You know, obviously, talk to your doctor if you see any kind of bleeding, any kind of anything like that. But I just wanna share that, you know, this happened to me and everything was okay, you know? So let's move on. Definitely more out of breath whenever I talked in week six it kind of crept up on me and then suddenly I was like, I walk up the stairs and I was trying to vlog and I'd be like, wait a minute guys. Always recording videos or vlogging, like I would just feel like I was like huffing and puffing. Like I was trying to work out, but I was just standing there. I know it's very normal. Definitely needing to pee more and also waking up in the middle of the night to pee, which is something that has never happened ever, maybe when I was a little kid, I don't know. So strange, definitely hated it. I love sleeping, I'm good to go when I'm sleeping and that was a big switch for me. And I know that's also something that's probably gonna get worse before it gets better anytime soon and then I'm gonna have a baby and then I'm definitely not gonna be sleeping through the night. Definitely noticed constipation. I'm sorry if that's TMI for you, but that's something that I definitely experienced through fertility treatments and I don't think I really talked about it going through you know, my egg retrievals and stuff, the medication that I was on definitely caused constipation. I don't think I really brought it up and that's probably unfair. I wanna be transparent. I wanna be real with you guys. Pregnancy has definitely caused my digestive system to slow down and every doctor I've talked to about it has said that's completely normal. There are obviously like very easy lifestyle changes that you can make to help the situation. I did all of those changes. It did not help. I ended up using cold 
lace and that's worked for me really really well and i'm sorry if that's too much information for you but it's a problem and it can make you feel really really uncomfortable and bloated when you're already bloated from progesterone and all of those hormones and everything getting started also about progesterone i at this time i was still doing my progesterone and oil shots and i had huge lumps. I still have lumps. I know this doesn't apply for everyone, but if you've been through fertility treatments, it's likely that you have to do progesterone shots or suppositories. But if you do the shots, you get lumps and they are super, super painful. And to this day, mine have not gone away. I still have pain in my hips. I have numbness and I have pain. I know that sounds very weird, but all the way down my hips, you can't even see where I'm pointing, but like it's the weirdest feeling. I am scared that it's never gonna go away. Ugh. And it bums me out sometimes, but at the same time, it's just like, for the last year, since I started fertility treatments, it's like you slowly just start to feel like your body doesn't belong to you. And it's just like a crash course in getting ready for pregnancy. Or at least that's how I've like made peace with it. If you've been through progesterone shots, did you ever get your feeling and did you ever get away from the pain and the lumps and everything on your hips and like your love handle area? Like I am all ears because when I try to look it up online, there isn't a lot of information. Anyway, that was a tangent. Oh, I also wrote that I had brown spotting in week six. I thought I just had red spotting, but I also had brown spotting. Okay, that was a stressful week. I was tired, I was bloated, I had cramps. Not intense, intense cramps, but it was definitely noticeable. Uh, sometimes it would be like a shooting pain. Other times it would just be like, is this a period cramp? And it would freak me out, but it would be momentary. It wouldn't be like a prolonged pain. It would just be like less than a minute, you know? And then also my boobs still hurt. <laughs> Maybe I should stop saying that one. <laughs> A lot of these things started and then consistently went on and on and on. Moving on to week seven. Okay, so I started to notice really dry skin, which I've never had in my life before. I'm like a grease ball. I have very oily skin and I actually for once in my life had dry skin. And I also noticed super, super dry lips. And that was caused by not being able to breathe out of my nose at all, especially at night, especially when I was sleeping. So that means I was sleeping with my mouth wide open and my lips were getting dried out. I started putting Vaseline on my lips before I go to sleep. That's definitely helped a lot, but I'm still super, super congested. That's another pregnancy symptom that definitely surprised me, but I think it is really, really common. Also in week seven, I was really tired. This was the beginning of the absolute exhaustion. Like when I would stand up and cook, I don't really take on like the hardest recipes. Like it does not take me a lifetime to do these things but i would just stand there and be like i have to lay down like i feel so tired and that's so not me i think this is also the beginning of wanting to take naps during the day which is something i've never done as an adult like never done since i was like in preschool basically like i'm not a nap person and i would just get to the point when i was like looking at my screen editing a video and my eyes would just start to close like nodding off. You always hear that pregnant people are exhausted, but you never truly know what that feels like until it happens to you. It's like at the end of the day, after you've been at Disney World all day and you've walked uh, 90,000 steps, that's how you feel at like 2 p.m. <laughs> and going along with the nausea, I started gagging when I would try to eat Tums. I was eating Tums for the acid reflux that I was having, which is something that I experienced before pregnancy, like on and off here and there, kind of just depending on what I'd been eating. But in pregnancy, it is an everyday nonstop issue. I take Pepsid for it now. My doctor said that's a safe solution for me. I tried to switch up my diet, eat different things, eat at different times to try to manage it. But no matter what I did, I have reflux every single day. It is what it is. But when I try to eat Tums, I don't know, it's like the chalkiness, it makes me gag and that never happened before. Also gagging when I would brush my tongue, never happened before. Like just brushing my teeth casually, not doing anything wild. And I'd be like, <laughs> don't know what that's about. Also feeling very bloated having some cramps here and there, crazy hungry. I don't know if that's when like cravings started, but basically for me, I don't have very specific cravings. 
It's just basically anything I hear about food wise, like we drive by a restaurant, I'm like, wow, I could go for that. Or we see something on TV or in a vlog on YouTube. Everything sounds delicious to me, except for Quest Bars. And I've talked about this in one of my vlogs, Quest Bars, Quest Cookies. I used to eat those for snacks all the time, just like in the afternoon, you know, when you get snacky, I just felt like, you know, this is like a yummy sweet treat that has extra protein, has a good amount of calories, like it's a smart snack. Since I've been pregnant, I want nothing to do with them. We always have them in the house because Grant also likes them and they're just like, <sighs> that's the only thing that I've just been very turned off by like food aversion wise. And then this doesn't count as a food aversion, but scented trash bags. Grant bought like a lifetime supply of them from Costco. And when I smell them, oh, it's like the grossest smell ever. It doesn't make me throw up, but I could not hate that smell more. I hated them before pregnancy, but since pregnancy, I can smell it from a mile away and I hate it so much. Anyway, also crazy dreams. I have crazy dreams anyway because of my lupus medicine. It can cause crazy, crazy dreams. So I never take it at night because of that because it kind of gives me dreams that you like wake up from and you like can't sleep for a week after that because they're like so horrifying. But these pregnancy dreams, have definitely given my Plaquenil dreams a run for their money. They are crazy and sometimes will wake me up in the middle of the night. These dreams are crazy, but they're not as scary. I will say that. Just generally disturbed sleep, like not being comfortable or one morning I woke up and I had chest pains, which scared me to death. Now moving on to week eight and nine, we're gonna speed this up a little bit. The nausea became very, very intense. I wasn't throwing up, but I'm kind of somebody that very rarely throws up. Like it would take like a major, major illness to actually make me throw up. But I basically just felt like I was on the edge of throwing up all the time. And the only thing that would help me is making sure I'm having super frequent snacks and eating really frequently. That was the trick for me. A friend also sent us Preggy Pops. They're basically just like hard candy that are specifically for pregnant women and help fight nausea. I don't know if it's the sugar in it. I don't know what it is that's magical about these things, but they really do work. I'll definitely put a link to those in the description. I just basically had to stay on top of eating. Before pregnancy, I definitely would be known to like forget about lunch or like eat lunch at like three o'clock or something because I was busy or I forgot. That does not happen anymore. Like I'm ready for lunch at 11 a.m. I'm ready for dinner at 5 p.m. Like I need to eat. And if I wait too late to cook something, it's just an emergency. I need to eat or I will feel sick and I try to avoid that at all costs. Uh, ongoing reflux, coughing associated with the reflux. I felt like I couldn't re really breathe. And then I was coughing on top of that, which made me think I had COVID. Scary, didn't have COVID, it's all good. Okay, and the next thing is burping. <laughs> I have burped more in like one night of pregnancy than the rest of my life combined. I don't know what it is. 7 p.m. hits, no matter what I have for dinner, no matter what time I eat dinner, I start burping. I remember this from childhood, but I don't really feel like it's happened since then. It's the kind of thing where it's like, you feel really sick and you feel like you're gonna throw up, like you're convinced I'm about to throw up and then you burp and then you feel better. But it happens to me like a hundred times back to back to back to back every single night. And it's so weird and it's so annoying. And it's like gross, you know, you're just sitting there burping. I've heard a lot of people say that pregnant women like fart a lot, like gas is an issue because of your, I literally just burped, great. Because of your digestive system slowing down like it does, it can just cause a lot more gas. And I've heard people say they fart all the time. That hasn't been me. I burp nonstop all the time. I also had sharp breast pain, not like it was at the beginning. It was more like localized and it would just be like, a sudden sharp pain. It was very annoying. A little bit of cramps, but no bleeding from week eight on, which I'm so grateful for. I felt so sleepy during this period. For example, I fell asleep at a CarMax. We went to sell my husband's car and we had to wait a little bit, like a little bit. And it was the afternoon, it was probably like 2 p.m. I fell asleep in a waiting room with people around. It's so not something that has ever been part of my life before. 
I'm not someone that can fall asleep anywhere at any time, no matter what's going on. And I fell asleep at a CarMax. That is the ultimate illustration of how exhausted I was feeling. I also wrote that at that point in the pregnancy, I was still wearing jeans comfortably-ish. Like I felt really bloated, but I could still wear my jeans and stuff. Okay, moving on to week 10 and 11, feeling worse than ever. Like I felt like I could barely do anything. Everything was moving in slow-mo. When I wasn't completely exhausted and wanting to go to sleep, it was just like, ugh. I was just like eking along. I felt no motivation. I just felt like things were falling apart around me. It was kind of a rough period. Like it kind of made me sad just because it was just something I hadn't felt before. It was just so low energy and I was just struggling. And even though ultimately I know why I was feeling like that, it still had an effect on my emotions. And I was feeling kind of bummed out because I was just feeling so dead inside. Sleepy generally, especially in that, I wrote a lot about how I was sleepy during these weeks. <laughs> Less breast pain by this time. So all the weeks before 10 and 11, breast pain was a leading thing and it started to lessen at this point, which I was really thankful for. Random cramps, but nothing crazy. And I wrote, so annoyed with dumb people. <laughs> My patience was wearing thin, especially with like strangers on the internet, like having people, you know, write DMs to me or comments that were really condescending or kind of being bossy, telling me, oh no, don't do this for pregnancy or do this because apparently that kind of stuff starts before you even have the baby. And I guess the hormones are kicking in and I'm just not having it. I still feel like that. I don't know if that will be ending anytime soon, but it's just people like have a whole new sense of entitlement to tell you whatever is on their mind and be super bossy and super condescending about anything and everything you are doing once you get pregnant. And I knew that that was part of pregnancy and motherhood, especially being a person that's online and shares a lot about my life. But I guess since I've been on YouTube for 10 years and I feel like I have a pretty thick skin and I've dealt with people that don't have boundaries and say rude things to me for a very long time, I've just, kind of thought that, oh, well, I'll just slide right off my back, you know? Starting around this 10 week period, I just wasn't having it anymore. And I have definitely engaged with people more than I ever have before. And it's not a great thing, but it is happening. Okay, moving on to week 12 and 13, I started having round ligament pain. And if you don't know what that is, it's like whenever you stand up really quickly or do a quick motion, you can have a sudden, pretty sharp pain around your hips, kind of lower abdomen area. And I didn't know what it was at first. I looked it up and then when I found round ligament pain, they were saying that would start later in pregnancy. I think like around like week 14 or something. Uh, but then I ended up bringing it up with my doctor and she's like, no, it can totally start as soon as week 12. So that started pretty early for me. I also started having a weird tailbone pain on the left side when walking and stuff like that. Um, it's not something that stops me in my tracks or anything. It does pass eventually, but it's a pain that I've never felt before. And I think that's just like from the uterus growing, everything kind of shifting and growing. Also around week 12 and 13, still nauseous when I'm hungry, but I could manage it a little bit better. I think the symptoms were like slowly, slowly, slightly going away, almost like so slight that I didn't even notice. But it was more so like, I'm gonna get nauseous around like 11.30, I need to eat lunch, gonna feel nauseous around like two or three, need to have a snack. Just like, it was a lot more manageable because I knew when it was coming and it was coming when I was gonna be hungry at normal meal times and snack times. Uh, so it was a little bit more manageable and slightly improving. And then also in the exhaustion department, I was sleepy early, but not like I'm so tired I could cry, which is an interesting feeling. <laughs> Still can't breathe through my nose and tailbone pain. And then that brings us to week 14. That's where I am right now. I'm in my second trimester. I'm so happy to be here. That was a lot. It's so weird to talk about because I feel like I'm complaining and I'm definitely talking about things that are uncomfortable and things that have not been fun going on with my body, 
but I totally think this can exist, being completely uncomfortable and maybe slightly miserable at times, but also so grateful to be here, so happy I'm pregnant, so happy to be chugging along week by week, no regrets whatsoever. Like I think both of those things can exist and sometimes people get pretty picky and tell you not to complain, but reality is reality. Things are going on with my body. I'm going to share it, but I also feel so grateful to be pregnant, to be having a baby that we waited for for so long and went through so much to get. Next up, let's talk about my bra getting stuck in the plant. Let's talk about a few things that have been good for me that I definitely want to recommend. First off, a lotion. This is the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Stretch Mark Massage Lotion. This is actually a lotion that I've talked about in the past. Grant actually recommended this to me because he's had stretch marks in the past and saw a lot of improvement with this. And I know it's something that's very common with all pregnant women. They want to keep their belly moisturized and, you know, it's really up in the air whether stuff like this, any kind of belly butter, lotion or whatever, does it really help with stretch marks? I don't know. I've seen some people say yes, I've seen some people say no, but I'm gonna be putting lotion on my entire body every day anyway, so why not go grab this at Walgreens? And I really like the smell. It is super, super moisturizing. I've been trying to use it every day. Sometimes I miss it, but whatever. I'm trying my best and this is what I've been using. I definitely like it and it's come from recommendations. Okay, and next up, my prenatal. Everybody needs a prenatal. I've been taking prenatals for years at this point. And this one is a multi plus DHA. I think this one is super, super accessible. You can find it at drugstores, Target, uh, also Amazon. I'll link it down below. This is one that my doctor said was good. It's also affordable. There are so many different brands out there, expensive, not expensive, gummies, ones that you have to take multiples throughout the day. I feel like that would be annoying. This one is just a really great all-in-one. It has the correct amount of folate or folic acid in it that my fertility doctor told me to look for, and it's also pretty affordable. So I think that is a really good option. Next up, let's talk about bras. I guess I talked about my boobs hurting through the week by week process, but I didn't talk about how they grew. They definitely grew. They haven't grown a ton. They've grown probably about one cup size so far. I know they can go crazy and get massive through pregnancy. So I don't really want to like splurge on a million bras at my current size, but I do need to manage the situation. And this has definitely been my favorite bra honestly, even before pregnancy, but then after I found out I was pregnant and my boobs were hurting and everything, this was the only bra I wanted to wear. This is the Soma in Bliss bra. It doesn't have any kind of wires. It's so soft, it's so comfy. I cannot say enough good things about this bra. It is just so wonderful, pregnant or not. I think it's also cute. It's not like super huge full coverage, but the only sad thing about this bra is it only goes up to a certain size and I am at the limit for the regular bras. There is a nursing version of this bra, but that only goes up one more size. So I could go and get the nursing bra, even though I don't need it. I'm not going to need it for a long time. My boobs are probably going to be much, much bigger by the time I do need a nursing bra. So I don't really wanna buy a nursing bra right now. That's the sad thing about this one, but this one will work for a lot, a lot, a lot of people, even if your boobs do get really big. Mine started out, you know, semi big, but this has been a whole thing that I've talked about on Instagram, and you guys gave me a really, really good recommendation from Target. Thank you so much. This one actually still has the tag on it because I ordered another one. I'm actually wearing the beige one <laughs> right now. Not gonna show you that one. This one's kind of like a cute melon color. It is very, very, very similar to the Soma and Bliss bra. This one is definitely much softer. You can feel that it's a better material. And I've had this one for quite a while, like months and months, and I haven't had these for quite as long, so I can't say how they'll do after washes and washes and washes, but it is very comparable. It is a nice bra, it is comfortable, and it comes in bigger sizes, which is nice. Ugh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Definitely recommend this one as a more affordable option, but I recommend this one even more 
if you're within the size range. Let's move on to the questions I got on Instagram. Okay, let's start off with a question that I've gotten literally every day for the past two months. Has Luna become more protective over you? Honestly, a lot of people say that dogs know you're pregnant and they become more protective and they follow you around more and stuff like that. I couldn't really tell if Luna knows anything because she's already like that. She's already my shadow. She is glued to me at all times. Like when we sleep, like there is no space between us at all, whether I would like it or not. She's always cuddling me. She's always staring at me. <laughs> We are in constant communication. So I wouldn't say she's become more protective over me, but I also can't imagine how she could be more protective of me. Okay, next up, a pretty basic question. Somehow I missed this. What is your due date you've never said? I really feel like I must have said this at some point, but right now my expected due date is September 1st. Feels like forever from now. I know I won't feel like that for very long. What safe workouts have you done and recommend? <laughs> I like how you put safe in quotes. I can't really recommend a workout for anyone because I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor, I don't know your situation, and I think everyone should play it as safe as possible and talk to your doctor about your situation because whatever's online or whatever some random YouTuber says, like. That might be good for me, but it might not be good for you. So basically the entire time before week 11 or 12, I was just too tired to even consider that. I was either battling nausea or battling exhaustion and I just mm, didn't wanna think about it, wasn't thinking about it. Uh, but then after that, I slowly started to get a little bit more energy and I started walking on the treadmill. And since I started around that time, I don't remember which week it was, I've been walking on the treadmill about 30 minutes every single day. And I know that's not much, I'm just walking. I do incorporate incline and kind of switch back between incline and a slower pace and then a higher pace and a lower incline. And basically that is half of my workout that I was doing back when I went to Orange Theory. And I feel good about that. I know it's not the most intense workout, I'm, I'm not really trying to like burn calories and everything. I'm just trying to get some steps in, get my body moving. And basically from every doctor and every source online that I've seen, they say what you need in pregnancy is 30 minutes of activity. And for me, walking on a treadmill is very easy, very doable. And even when I'm exhausted, I can at least do that. That might not be right for everyone. Everybody has to feel it out for themselves. Did you struggle with constant anxiety of losing the baby? Because six weeks here and sad, upset face. Yes, I struggled with constant anxiety, maybe not constant, but suddenly a fear would strike me or I'd feel a feeling, a sudden cramp, or the spotting that I had in week six and week seven, that definitely caused me a lot of worry. I still have moments where I'm really worried. I, I'm obviously not out of the clear. I will feel like I'm out of the clear when I am holding my baby. When I was talking to one of the ultrasound people that I loved so, so much at my fertility doctor, you know, we talked about one of the main things about being a mom is being worried and you're worried until you die. <laughs> it's part of love and it's part of wanting to protect them and it's normal and obviously you don't want it to get in the way of your everyday life. And I think for me, the anxiety didn't get in the way of my everyday life, but it was very intense, especially early on. So I get how you're feeling. And I would say, talk to somebody, talk to your partner, talk to your family, talk to friends. Through this whole process, I've had my sister that is also pregnant to talk to, and she's ahead of me in her pregnancy. So a lot of the things that I'm going through, she remembers very vividly. So that's been really helpful for me. And just basically when I'm worried, I talk to somebody about it and it usually makes me feel better. Last question. I feel like this one is important to mention. Before your positive test, did you feel any implantation cramping? So this is something that comes up a lot and something that you read about a lot and learn about a lot and you're very, very aware of whenever you're trying to get pregnant and you're going through a lot of two week waits and you're just like hyper aware of every little symptom. You know, you're waiting for that implantation cramping, that implantation bleeding, that never happened to me, or at least the bleeding never happened to me. I never had any spotting before the positive pregnancy test, but one day I did have 
a kind of sharp cramp. And I don't know if this was an implantation cramp because from what I've read online, implantation cramping can like last for a whole day, sometimes two, three days. I think that's what I've read. But what I felt, I was just laying down in bed. It was a Wednesday. I remember it was a Wednesday, but it was around the time where I would expect the implantation to be. And I felt a sharp pain in the cramp area. And I thought, is this it? I still don't know if it's it. I know some people don't feel implantation cramping. I know everyone does not have implantation bleeding. I didn't have it, my sister didn't have it. So really the answer to that question is I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> all right, so that's all the questions we're gonna do. One last thing before we go, I'm gonna show you my bump at 14 weeks. I tried to wear something that you could actually see it with. I feel like it changes every day. In the morning, it's small and it's like a little lump. But then once I drink water, have coffee, have breakfast, like by like 11 a.m. it's like, whoa, like a full bloaty belly and you can't see it the same way as the morning. And I've had breakfast, I've had lunch, I've had tons of water and everything already today. So who knows what you're gonna get, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Okay, I'm gonna try to like pull it tight so you can actually see. Can you see it? I definitely don't think it's a situation where someone out on the street would guess that I'm pregnant as they should not, but I know I'm pregnant. So I, I do see a bump. I got a little bump going. It definitely gets bigger throughout the day. It's sort of on the small side right now, but it's coming in. I'm loving it. All right, so that's everything for the first trimester roundup. I'm so excited to be here. So thankful to all of you guys. I've been so supportive since the very beginning, since long before I got pregnant, going through fertility treatments. I appreciate you guys so much, all of your prayers, all of your kind words, all of your cookies that I hear. So many of you guys say you're still eating. It just makes me so happy and I feel so lucky to have you guys and I feel so lucky to be here at 14 weeks and I'm out of breath and I feel like this video has been so long, but hopefully it's helpful for you guys or Hopefully it was interesting for anyone curious. Definitely subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video, turn on notifications, all of that. I'm on social media everywhere. It's Leanne Says. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks, I love you. Bye. This plant is wiggling. Stop wiggling. <laughs> ah, burped again. I'm already out of breath. One sentence in. Help. This is also a workout for me, obviously. Does it seem like I'm recording like on the surface of the sun? Maybe I am. <laughs>